Hey guys, my name is Levels, and we are here with a Seduce Me Too. Now this is my second time of having to record this, so I'm gonna end up being like a little bit faster, I guess, whatever. Yeah. So, this is James, Sam, Diana, Damien, uh, Matthew, and Eric, whatever his name is. Yeah, so I figured out which ones are which. I'm gonna go James, cause that's what I went for last time. Hold on there! Before you start the game, I need to ask you a few things. Don't want you getting lost now. First of all, have you read the first story, Seduce Me the Atome? Like, seriously read it. No skimming, no pretending to read it, no, no. It it's okay if you haven't. But there are a lot of things in this game that you won't understand unless you fully experienced and understood that story first. Oh, okay, awesome. Next question. You do know this is James's route, right? You know, the eldest incubus. Oh, awesome. All right then. James is pretty cool, huh? It's the glasses, isn't it? You can tell me. Anyway, I have one last question for you. Some people like hearing the trigger warnings before they start games while others don't really care and just want to play. It's cool either way, but do you want to know about some of the content listed in the game? No problem, it's my pleasure. Well, this game is recommended for players ages 18 and up. Trigger warnings include suicide, war, torture, mentions of rape, and a large amount of violence and sexual content. Don't worry though, any sex scene choice you encounter is completely up to you. You can play this game without needing to go through the sex scenes and still get the good endings. Consent is important. I think that should be everything. All right. Phew, that took a while. You forgot something. Huh? What did I forget? You forgot about the disclaimer. Oh, crap! Oh, how could I have forgotten about that? It's fine. I'll take care of it. <clears throat> this game was produced by Michaela Laws using the Renpai visual novel engine. We truly hope you enjoy this story. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Now, don't you have a war to go fight? I do. I just wanted to make sure everything was in order before the story began. I'll take my leave now. Thanks, Di. Do not call me Di. <laughs> anyway, we really do hope you like the story. Have fun! See you at the end. I wish to set a stone destiny. Because the fate of the Abyssal Plains is in the hands of the wrong man. I must set things right. I come bearing Oops. my life force as the price. Take as much as you desire, as long as my request is fulfilled. Then that is the price, as long as you set the stone destiny. Okay, I should have actually said that, but that's whatever. I'd almost forgotten. I clung to it by every thread, knowing if I let go, I'd be lost in the dark void, never to return. Why? Why was I so worried about my name? Well, it's the only thing that calmed that claim that I had reality, especially when I was behind bars. For some reason, I was in a cell. I don't know why. I don't know how I got in there. All I knew was I was in it, and I was chained to the wall by the shackles around my ankles. I didn't want to accept the bars were real. I didn't want to be in a cell. I didn't want to smell the dank, uh, dank stench of blood and sweat emanating all around me. But I had no choice in the matter. No matter how many times I examined my surroundings, they were all the same. I was in a cell in a dimly lit stone dungeon. The walls were here unfriendly, and shackled around my ankles proved no comfort. The rags I was forced to wear barely fit, and I felt filthy. Why was I here? I don't even—I don't have the answer. All I knew that I was trapped. 
I could hear her quite sobbing and muffling screams further down the hall, passageway I was in. They reverberated all from down the hall, down the hall, and I knew that they must have come from a fellow com prisoner or the condemned. I, however, only had one neighbor. In the cell beside me sat a figure wrapped in a purple cloak. The top of the figure was shrouded by both the shadows of the, set, the cell and the hood that covered her face. Their face. Uh, they, they, they never spoke. They never moved. Were they dead? I watched them closely for some time, but I never saw the body inhale or exhale or show any signs of life. I didn't wish to think further of it, so I turned my head away. What was happening? Open my mouth to give a shout, hoping that maybe someone would hear and I gave me some sort of clue of what was going on. As I tried to command my voice to speak, however, the large sounds the, the sound of a large door opened and echoed through the dungeon. I turned my head in the direction of the sound while watching slowly as uh, began to brighten like it was cut as if it was a torch moving towards myself. I started I started wide-eyed as they as what was approaching. Moving forward to my cell was a man I recognized, the one that I've been so close to my heart and had now had such a cold cold disdain in his eyes. My chest pounded as his name reverberated in my head. James. He was still in his human form, but his voice for, uh, vibrated with a demonic echo and waves sending shivers down my spine. His tone and cold unfeeling as if uh, he was not someone that he loved, but someone that he despised with every ounce of his being. Do you still live? I'm surprised. Suddenly, from the cell beside me, a crowded figure jumped up and slammed into the bars, gripping them with a snarl at James. I started a howls, uh, not able to see who's been hidden under by the cloak. You piece of filth! How can you dare show your face again? Diana? James seemed unfazed and stepped up towards Diana's cage and leaned in almost nose to nose with her. And you live too. How resilient you both are. We're not so weak as to break under your chains, traitor. After all, unlike you, I carry pure Lilith blood in my veins. In that human, the one you love is more powerful than your pathetic mind can fathom. What was Diana talking about? Why is James acting like this? I opened my mouth to speak, but I felt something holding my voice, as if it was a vice uh, that had been tightened around my vocal cords, denying them any chance to create the sound in my throat. James smirked and gripped Diana's chin, making her snarl louder. Anyone can be broken. It just takes time and patience, both of which I have in abundance. Fucking monk! Ugh! James tightened her, uh, his grip around her chin, digging his fingers into her jaw. Diana could only wince and glare at the one holding her. I felt fear uh, run through my body, and his lips curved even more into a devilish smirk. How could he look so evil? Be patient, woman. You'll have your turn soon enough. As James turned his gaze to me, I, sudden, I felt my body suddenly heat up. His eyes were glowing almost sick as a sickly uh, golden yellow as he stared into my soul and ignited a core and heat of desire. I felt dizzy and weak, my mouth falling open to a, to allow a silent sigh to escape from my lips. What was happening? James released Diana and walked to the door of my cell, quickly manipulating the lock to open it. As the door opened, I crawled myself for backwards towards the back of the cell suddenly afraid of what the demon was approaching me. At the same time, I felt uncannily and unnaturally elated at the man approaching me, with the smirk that tore at my heart. Well, time to dine. Don't you fucking touch her! Before I knew it, Diana pressed her body against the bars and that divided ourselves and grabbed James's shoulder, digging her nails into it. <laughs> you little... In retaliation, James swung his arm towards Diana, forming a familiar pistol in his hand. Within moments, he aimed it and shot it. 
I could only watch as Diana jumped back and, and held her chest, blood oozing between her fingers onto the ground. He stared. She stared at James in both pain and surprise before crumpling to the floor and exhaling the last breath that she ever she would ever take. My mom was caught in a frenzy of emotions while I was shocked and terrified and mortified that what was happening. My mind couldn't continue to dance in desire, uh, desirable waves that ran through my body. Why can't I control myself? The pistol in James's hand had disappeared as I let out a sneer of irritation. Damn it! Oh, let out a He did. Okay, whatever. James then looked at me, towering over him. Uh, looked at me, towering over him. Why is this thing it twice? Jesus! Uh, as I both cowered in fear and melted against the wall, uh, the wall, the back wall of myself. Looks like you'll have to give me twice the amount of energy from now on. As James began to walk, step towards me, I felt hot tears run down my cheek uh, while I planted, painted it like a dog in heat. I wanted to scream. I wanted to tell him not to hurt me. My voice be, uh, began to press against the vice holding and wanted to explode out. James' shadow consumed me and I let out a scream. Then I woke up. Uh, yes. This James is such an asshole. <laughs> I would have actually had like responses to make, but since it's my second time doing it, I just hope that it works this time. But that's okay. I shot up in fear. I shot up. <laughs> I shot up in fear. Yeah, I shot up in my bed, painting wildly as my heart pounded against my rib cage. I gripped my hand over my chest, feeling my pulse beating underneath the skin in frantic rhythm. In this time of that with my hastening breath. I heard a, a faint echo of my scream bouncing through the, through the room as I let reality sink in. I was in a dream, and I was awake now. Everything was okay. Everything was... What? My heart froze as I felt my body tense up at the sound of James's voice beside me. My, heat ch um, my heated cheeks reminded me of the tears that I shed in the dream who had, who had caused them. I shot my head up at uh, the sides to see James, the man who whom I loved, also the man who terrified me, looking at me with a paint, uh, the face painted with concern and worry. Love, are you okay? Get away from me! I couldn't control myself. I quickly rolled out of bed, pressing myself back to against the far wall, staring at him in absolute terror. James only stared at me, still shocked and now troubled. He didn't move, not like he wanted to frighten me further. <laughs> Images of dreams that I have began to uh, replay in my head, replacing the James in the bed with the James towering over me in a dark jail cell. My body shook violently from the memory, but soon my logic began to break through the images apart, leaving me in a sight of James still in bed staring at me. The thought of slowly mel uh, melting melted, and I felt I started to cry once again. This time, my heart again had ached at realizing whom I yelled at. I lurched further. I practically jumped into James's arms. Jumped at James. It f fucking uh, whatever. Same thing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. There's nothing to be sorry about. It was only a nightmare. I'm right here. That was the problem. James held me close as I began to cry on his shoulder, continuing to apologize at, to him, whimpering and sobbing like a child as the fear from the nightmare slowly began to fade away. James, James's hand simply ran over my head and hand, head and hair, trying to calm me down. It only felt, it, but it felt so real. Yeah, I knew that I couldn't. It couldn't have been real. James is right here, protecting me, comforting me, proving that he he had loved me. He would never hurt me. Ever. Eventually, I was able to calm down, and I looked into the man holding me as if a gentle smile down at me. Are you alright? I nodded, earning a small squeeze around my arms. I naturally cuddled closer to his body, desiring more warmth. Well, what, what time is it? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Okay, uh, James, uh, uh, genuinely hugged 
gently hugged me tighter to his body and looked over to the nightstand at his phone, which had docked at a fancy speaker charger. It's 3.40 a.m. We still had a few hours before the alarm had set us, set to wake us up. Crap, why did I have to have a nightmare that woke us, woke both of us up? I gripped James' shoulder and looked at him apologetically. I'm sorry, I, I know you need your sleep. Please don't worry about it. My beautiful fiancé is much more important to me than sleep. Oh my god. <laughs> As he said fiancé, I couldn't help but feel my face heat up, letting a brush run down my cheeks. It was true that I was his fiancé. He had asked me to marry him a couple a months ago. I accepted his proposal and wanted to be his wife. Just thinking about the idea of being him, being with him forever in imaginary butterflies in my stomach, dancing around happily, fluttering their wings against my heart. It's a dream. It's a dream come true. His warmth, his love and warmth assured me that the nightmare was just that. He was my wonderful husband to be, and I was his wife. My body couldn't control the shiver of happiness. James caught the little shiver and gen uh, gently ran his hands up and down my Are arms. you feeling cold? No, he just made me happy. That's all. As I leaned in to kiss his, kiss, kiss his cheek, uh, he smiled and kissed mine in return. His warmth had sent uh, another rhetoric shiver down my spine. I felt joy run through his veins. I truly love James. It wasn't long, however, before I felt some uh, something gently brush against my hip. I, I looked down at James, uh, clearing his throat in embarrassment. <laughs> uh, raising an eyebrow as well as growing as a growing brush on my face. I looked at my fiance uh fiance or fiance Yeah, fiance. I think it's right. Yeah, I think it's right. Um as he uh looked uh, looked away from me it was almost face right uh, I'm sorry, I can't exactly control my well my excitement when you say things like that. <laughs> Uh, I would just say this because just I need to. I want to see what happens to this. I did this one and it went into a whole sex scene and I just I want to see something else. So let's see if does he go back to sleep. James smiled, taking a deep breath and calmed down and noticed me uh, gently release me and move to under the covers and let me in. I slid my body under the covers and moved my moved my body lying lying against his eye. He wrapped his arms around me and closed his eyes. I wasn't wanting to do anything more than to hold, uh, than then held, hold, hold, and sleep next to the man I loved. I was happy he understood my decision and respected it. That was the part that made me fall in love with him in the first place. That is very true. For the first game, I didn't really go hopping into his bed. Uh, any, okay. <laughs> I closed my eyes and went back to sleep, knowing that James will protect me from more from any more nightmares. The nightmares didn't return. I felt I slept peacefully within James's arms, if anything, as if nothing mattered in the world except me and him. The morning was kind. James and I s sweetly awakened before our laps. Ah, I felt well rested, uh, ready for the day. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. It's just I had to do this twice. I need to see if it works this time. So I am going to save again. So, if you want to see more of this, then you know what to do. Because I am certainly enjoying it. It's pretty interesting. I want to know if that dream is a premonition or not. I really hope not. No one wants to have a premonition like that that actually comes through. True. I mean, so, uh, yeah. Bye-bye now.